The Bible says the 24 elders, what they have been commissioned to do is to worship God in the fullness of his glory. Can I have a true worshipers in the house this moment to join the host of heaven and to approach the presence of the almighty God? Halloween
so I will then let go. Fortress, the glory and the lifter up of our head, 
our shield, our buckler, our comforter, our strength, the pillar that holds our lives together, our all in all, the one that puts food on our table, the one that perfumes our life, the one that decorates us with beauty, the Lord in whom we move, in whom we live, in whom we have our being our incomparable God. The Lord that cannot be compared with any man. The Lord that is faithful to his promises and his covenants. The Lord God Almighty that is high and lifted up. The one that is lifted up above the gods, above principalities, above sicknesses, above diseases, above challenges, above problems, above troubles. Father, we give you praise. Behold, O oh God, the men of the Grace Assembly Parish say thank you. The women of Grace Assembly Parish say thank you. The youth and the children, oh God, we are saying thank you this morning. You kept us through January. You kept us through the thick and the thin. Father, the troubles and the sicknesses and the diseases that swallowed others up, Father, you have not allowed them to swallow us up. It has been you. Father, we are careful to return back to you. All the glory, all the praises. Father, there is nothing else we want to say this morning than to say thank you. Adu Baba. Well, Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, oh Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your kindness. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. To you be all the glory. Now and forevermore. Father, let our come our coming here this morning. Let it not be in vain. We will not live empty-handed. We will not go back the same way we came. Some of us came empty. Let us leave this place being filled up. Some of us came weak. Let us leave this place being straightened. Some of us came discouraged. Let us leave here, oh God, being encouraged. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us came here weeping. Let us leave this place, oh God, even with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way in this place today. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, our Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. If you came here with your hands this morning, clap those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are here with your voice this morning, shout hallelujah. And if you are here with your two legs this morning, jump up to the Lord and give him praise. Put those wonderful hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody and say, Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Tell the person your thanksgiving today will be accepted by Him. And you receive the blessings that come with it. I said, Tell the person you will receive the blessings that will come with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we're going to take our offering now, and we're also going to take our tithes while standing so please prepare your offering put it in a special envelope and also prepare your tithe put it also in a special envelope we're going to take our offering with the congregational hymn as we as usual we will take our offerings while standing the baskets will go round you drop your offering in the offering basket that goes round when you are done with that you will come out here to the front of the pulpit and drop your tithe and God will bless us as we do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we will take it with our hymn, O Worship the King, All Glorious Above, as the choir would lead us.
someone that has not dropped their tithes or offering let us pray our maker our defender our redeemer and our friend father we thank you king of glory we are ever grateful again for another opportunity to sow into your vineyard father we are asking and we are praying that as we have sown this morning the blessings that come with sowing father let it be our portion Amen. the bible says that abel and cain brought their offering unto the lord but god had respect unto the offering of abel father this morning have respect unto our offering Amen. king of glory have respect unto us Amen. Father, whatever we bring before you as the reason of our offering today, King of Glory, we are asking and we are praying that you will bless. Amen. You will redeem us from every form of temptation. Amen. You will shield us from every attack of the world. Amen. Father, for your children who have dropped their tithes this morning, ancient of this, I declare and I decree that the windows of heaven will open unto them. Amen. Whatever they lay their hands on, Father, you will bless it more than they ever imagined. Amen. King of glory, you will surprise them more than the world can ever do. Amen. Father, their bands will overflow with your goodness. Amen. Lord God Almighty, they will never lack. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You, Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Put those wonderful hands together for Jesus. As we take our seats. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah! Ah, that is for the person sitting next to you. If you really mean it, shout a very loud hallelujah. <laughs> Testimony time. Hello. Has God not been good to you? Hello. Testimony time. Any testifiers in the house? Please come off. Thank you. Okay. Any testifier in the house? Please come up. Oh, please. Thank you very much. You're an angel. Come up. Thank you. Two. Thank you coming any more testimonies testifiers in the house That's, please hold on please come up yeah okay in my local church in England the pastor once said a sermon sometimes you are asking something from God and it's not coming he in fact didn't give you that thing that you are asking he said we should give testimony about it because sometimes that thing that you want it may be good in your own eyes but it's not the way of god so sometimes we want to give testimony it is a cream that rises to the top you don't know what the problem is so let's listen to these two testimonies that we have thank you hallelujah I want to thank God for his goodness upon my life and I want to thank God for good health. Uh, it's been a year plus now since I went for a surgery and uh, uh, it was successful despite the report that the doctors gave. But today I'm standing here healthy and strong. And before I went for the surgery, I, I asked God for something. I told him that if I go in there, in there, in the theater room and come out safe, 
that anywhere I set my feet upon, that I'll stand out to say thank you. I, I was on that tray for more than eight hours. It was not an easy journey, but God saw me through. And just one minute, I I can I can just give this testimony without singing to him. I just want to be where you are Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from my far Drumming it to where I just want to be where you are To enter boldly in your presence I don't want to worship from my far Draw me near to where you are I want to be where you are Praise the living Jesus. I want to testify to the glory of God. First of all, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. Something happened in um, September that led me to come to Dubai. Something terrible, not a story for today. So I had to come to Dubai with a month visa. So when I came, I came to meet my husband. I put up with a friend. So suddenly, I, somebody in that place told me that I need to get a job here. I never thought of it. So somehow, God, I had to pray and ask God for a lead. So along the, along the line, so I had something that told me that I should go around, that I would get a job. But I and my husband went all around Dubai on that day. We could not get anything. So I told myself in my spirit that what's happening. So he said, not of him that will it, not him that run it, but it is God that showeth mercy. So along the line, I started praying, and we came for a service here in November because I came to, uh, October 28. So a Thanksgiving service like this, and our daddy in the Lord said we should come out and praise God and dance our way into into our blessings. So I came out for the first time and I danced with my husband. So that same week, a call just come in from my friends that I put up with and said. Through, uh, through this redeem that there's a job somewhere so I went with my uh, with my um, CV to the place to the school when I got to the place it was just like interaction section with the visit with the VP so immediately after everything they gave me the job after two days not not that alone I so my visa had to collapse after a month <laughs> so I had to go back I had to ask this, so I did another one month and came in again with the hope that the school is going to do another visa for me. It also collapsed again, so I had to <laughs> return back to Nigeria. Well, while I was going, the testimony was that they are not going to call me. The people that worked here for three months, some of them, they don't even call them. That is the testimony. And I said, my case is different. I know who I am. So when I got to the service, which is the last one, that was 25th, it was also a Thanksgiving service again. Daddy said, we should also come and, pr and praise God for what God did for us. Jesus paid the price that we should also do something special for Jesus. So that day I also, I also praised God. I was even having 
coins with me, but I praise God as if I was having thousands with me. Praise the living Jesus. After everything, I was just in Nigeria when the school called me to come back. And to God be the glory. I have my two years visa. So God be the glory. Thank you for those testimonies. It is a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. I have my own testimony to share. It has been a wonderful week for me. Uh, I traveled to Abu Dhabi every day this week. And to tell you, I cannot just put word to what God has done for me this week. Um, to top it up, uh, my boss asked me to do something yesterday, just impromptu. And he wanted me to deliver by Saturday. But um, I sought courage, you know, from God because there was nobody else around to help me. And uh, I was able to turn it around by half past four yesterday evening. And for the first time in about eight months since I worked in Abu Dhabi with my boss, he actually said, Benjamin, thank you very much. You know, you've done really good. I mean, to some, it's not a lot, but to me, believe me, it's a lot. You know, for your boss to appreciate you, it's a testimony. So I encourage you, please, whenever we ask for testimonies, take the time, you know, and thank God. Thank God for the salvation of your soul, even the miracle of waking up. The miracle of even coming to his presence. How many of you know that there are some people that they cannot say God? The word God, you know, doesn't resonate with them. But when they fly in the air and they play to foo -foo -foo, they say, oh my God. <laughs> so let us thank God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity in your presence. You are the most wonderful God. No one like you. You conceived this day and you brought us all together. You have identified these ones to give you glory and honor. For the wonderful things you have done in their lives, we want to thank you. Thank you for our brother that was ill. You are the greatest healer. Thank you for the wonderful rendition, the song that he gave us for the blessing that it meant to us. And so, Lord, we thank you for our sister, for the gift of job, visa, and for the opportunity to share with us. We thank you. We don't take anything for granted. And so for other that are sitting down there that want to give you testimony and as they say in their heart we thank you for them and so our heavenly father blessed be your holy name as we go forward the rest of the service today go with us let your holy spirit abide in us take absolute control of our thoughts and mind today this week this month in jesus name we pray Be seated. Thank you.
God this morning. For everything he's done for us, he is the giver of life. He kept you from January to this time. Many of God, but you are alive. Are you paying the price of Thanksgiving for him this morning? We worship you. 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 We worship you.
worshiping the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and you will still be on your seat. And you will be comfortable. I thought you were going to join the choir and just lift his name on that. Come on, just worship God in the just have to praise God and just worship him for who he is. You know, thanksgiving is when you give thanks unto God for what he has done. You bring your substance, you bless him. But you praise him for who he is. How many people are ready to do that in the morning, this morning? Despite things are not working, you just want to bless God for who he is, for who you are. Join the choir and say for who you we are. Worship you. Just for who you are. Just for who you are. For who you are. because you are the door that leads to every other door of testimonies. Lord, we thank you for the testimony that you have given unto us. Thank you for the life of your people. Thank you because you preserved our lives in your mercy. Thank you, Lord, because you are faithful. Despite our infidelity, Lord, we thank you because your fidelity towards us is constant. Lord, we give you praise. If you just oppose you with every other God, all other gods, they are nothing. Lord, we thank you because you are God, even when the earth is not existing. And while the earth is existing, you are still God. When the earth will no longer be, you will still be God. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we thank you for our lives. Thank you for preservation. Thank you for provision. Lord, we give you praise. Father, accept our thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Lord, this morning, as a church, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, as we are going to share your word, open our eyes that we will be able to behold wondrous things in your word. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for this wonderful choir. I said, put your hands together for this wonderful choir. They are amazing. Amen. Without any doubt, from the beginning of the service, you will know that the Lord is in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. God told Jeremiah, he said, because you speak these words of mine, I will turn those words in your mouth to be a fire. And the people that hear you or circumstances, situation around you that hears that word becomes wood. When you speak the word of God, it becomes fire in your mouth. And circumstances and situation that you speak those words to becomes what? Wood. 
and the fire consumes the wood and it turns to ashes. I want you to turn to your neighbor to your right and to your left and speak word of life into their lives and tell them that your service is in the service. Maybe you don't understand. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he said, Pray always with all prayers. That means somebody's prayer is in the prayers. And you don't know where that prayer is going to be. That will be your prayer. And somebody's praise is in the praise. We have had testimony. Somebody's praise in the praise. Come on, let me tell your neighbor, your praise is in the praise. Your praise is in the praise. There could be many praises. You can be praising God for many years. But there is a place that you are going to praise God. And that will be your praise. Come on, let me your, tell your neighbor. You say, your praise is in the praise today. Your praise is in the praise today. Somebody's time is in the times. I want you to help me tell your neighbor and say, your time is in the times. Your hour is in the hours. And there is somebody that is day is in the days. But a particular day is his day. Come on, help me tell your neighbor and say, my day is today. Because somebody's day is in the days. There are so many days, but there is a particular day that will be somebody's day. And that is the day that there will be a turn around in the life of a man. Amen. Somebody has been sleeping for many years. And that is Jacob. And he slept in a place. He said, the Lord is in this place. And I knew him not. But he has been sleeping. I prophesy. Can you just help me tell your neighbor that your day is today. And I pray for you that today will be your day in the name of Jesus. I don't know the kind of revelation that you have been having. But the revelation that you are going to go home with today will be your revelation for life. In the name of Jesus. We started a series this year talking about uh, you excelling and blossoming but this morning where the Holy Spirit wants me to stop that's where we stop Amen. Jeremiah chapter 5 chapter 1 verse 5 God told Jeremiah he said before I found thee in the belly I knew thee and I sanctified thee and he gave him a test in verse 6 the man failed in verse 10 the Lord should, told him for the second time what he has told him in verse 5 and he gave him a test and said, what do you see? And this time around, the man said, I see a rod of a mole tree. That means he saw a, a rod means the word of God. It has a revelation, the rhema of the word. And God told him, he said, thou hast seen well. Because you have the rhema of the word of God. He said, I will esteem my word in your mouth to do what? To perform. Praise the Lord. So I'll be talking about people you know I, I will talk about excellence for the you know the series three i want to talk about excellence there is no man there is if last week we prayed and somebody just said something to a man and finished him and he said you are my first son and he said a lot of things about the guy what is supposed to be he said finally thou shalt not excel that's a big cause for a man not to excel in life. To excel means you need you will be outstanding. What the father has just told the son is that he will not be outstanding, he will struggle for life. I prophesy that you will excel in the name of Jesus. In everything that you do you will be outstanding Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that in the world, nobody pays a mediocre? What is common? Nobody will pay you. But they will only pay you for what is outstanding. 
Amen. There is going to be what? A payment for something that is outstanding. God gave you ideas. I've told people several days. When you give unto God, God will not give you pan sterling. He will not give you naira. He will not give you dirhams. He will only give you what is obtainable or what you can get from heaven. And what you can get from heaven is called blessing. In the book of Proverbs, he said, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added no sorrow. It is that blessings of God that will be converted. And those blessings come in form of gifting, talent, that you will convert those ideas to what? To, what? to currency. That when you get an idea and you are able to excel with the idea, people will come to you to pay you money and that is what heaven will bless you with so a lot of people come to church they believe I give 10 dirhams and God is going to give me 20 dirhams 100% sorry sir even in the, in, the, in the scripture it is written 100 folds 100 folds is different from 100% God the, the Bible did not say 100% when you talk about folding is something when you fold something, if this is a, just a sign, if it is a coin, when you fold something, uh, maybe a tape around it for the first time, it is going to be at a particular length. When it goes around that coin the second time, it will be bigger than the first round. So when God said, I'm going to give you 100 folds, he's not talking about 100%. 100% is when the first fold is equal to the second fold. When you fold something hundred times, that length cannot be cannot be equal to the first length that you run it with. Check it. That is mathematics. So when God says, "I'm going to give you hundred folds," it means hundred folds. Blessing, and I pray for you that the Lord will give you hundred fold blessing Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I know we have come to give the Lord praise today. We are called to give God worship, but we are going to talk about excellence a little bit. Then we go into worship. Amen. And I want to talk about excellence this morning. And I will use that same word, excellence. And where God wants us to touch a little bit, I will just touch on that. The first E in that excellence today is talking about ego. I've been talking about ego. Ego is about vision. Where people, where other birds when they where they where they cannot fly up to the eagles will fly there when they are seeing sun from afar off the eagle flies better and it moves towards that sun no any other bird can do that and the lord said the lord god is sun that means there are places that you need to fly to where other people cannot fly in fact, in life, there are categories, even in school, there are levels. Amen. When you go to only very few people are flying at the top, very, very few. Amen. But I pray for you that the Lord will take you from where you are and make you a higher flyer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Even in school, when you go to university, they said there is what is called first degree second degree third degree there are levels sir. where you say first degree is it not a BA or BSc I heard the next one is MA MSc and PhD if you have 100 people in the class at BA or BSc by the time you start they start MBA or MA or MSc, whichever one you call it, do you think they will be 100? Maybe they will have dropped up to 20, if not 10, and if not 5. But when you talk about PhD, maybe out of the 100 people at the BSc level, you will find only two. And so also in the kingdom, we have BA, we have BMSC, and then we have PhD. 
Maybe I should define again for you. BA is that you are born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> BA is what? You are born again. You see, there are so many people that you find today. I am what? Born again. Born, 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 born again. Born, born, born. Are you born again? Oh, I am born again. Oh, I'm just talk speaking. Oh, maybe you call it BSC. It is born of the spirit. Eh? <laughs> Amen. You know, we are talking about born again. You know, you are born of the spirit and circumcised in Christ. That is BSC. Hallelujah. Your heart is circumcised. You, amen. amen. You'll find, you see, even in the, in the plane, you have first class, business class, and common class. That common class is equal to BSC or your BA. Amen. And when you check, that place there is a lot of noise amen you know when you fly economy amen i pray i fly, I fly first class <laughs> amen you know that place could be so exciting and that is where you find people with noise because people are many there if you need to excel you need to be at that top the next one is maybe i should define this ma that is master of all circumstances. If it is MSc, it is master of situation and circumstances. Very few people that you find there. That is a sanctification age, a, a sanctification state. John 17, 17. Jesus Christ says, Sanctify thyself through thy truth, because thy what? Thy word is true. Only very few people among the people that are in BA class that are born again how many people are sanctified that we go from a level and say i consecrate my life in rather you will begin to hear people i am a christian but i don't take nonsense you find them in ba amen i don't want to be in those common class amen help me tell your neighbor don't remain in that ba uh-huh so when you talk about then where you become, you know, when you are operating at MSC, you know, even the demons, they will see you, they will know this one is different, that you are going somewhere. But only very few people operate at PhD level, and that's where you find the life of Daddy Gio. And PhD is power over host of demons. When they enter into when they enter into a place, principalities and power bows. And that is PhD, sir. Amen. And that's when we are talking about excellence, the E there, we are talking about people that are on top. They don't fly low. The people, they are eagle. They are on the top. That's what we are talking about, sir. Amen. Amen. You, this year, you don't have to fly low. You don't have to begin to walk on just like the way uh, chickens are walking. They have wings, but they cannot fly. Amen. Amen. You, do, you don't have to operate like chicken when you are nigu i want to talk uh, let me just go very fast so that we go into thanksgiving i'm going to do introduction this morning or into this month the keys of blossoming using the word of excellence three and extra life many people don't examine their lives i'm talking about excellence the x there is extra life your life is being extra. You know, they are, I'm talking about identity here. Some people don't know who they are. Jesus Christ so said in Luke chapter 9 verse 20. He said, who do you say I am? And Jesus Christ went ahead to define himself. He said, I am the bread of life. I am resurrection and power. Jesus Christ knows who he is. Who are you? You don't even know. Who you are many of us we have identity problem if you need to excel in life you need to know who you are you extra your life there is a time to take stock of your life who are you why are you here you need to know who you are that is identity even some some you know some ladies here they want to be they wish that they are a man some of them they wish I'm a man. Amen. 
I think I've said this one before. There, is, there was a time I asked people, I said, if you meet God face to face, what is the first question that you will ask God? A lady wrote, he said, the first question I will ask God is, why do you create me short? <laughs> Amen. That is identity problem. She has problem with identity. God created that short so that one wonderful brother who is very tall will just say, I like a short sister. <laughs> eh? Some will say that I am fat. Well, God, they said the beauty queen or whatever, beauty virgin, they are just the slim people. Sorry, sir. If you are fat, the Bible says fat belongs to God. Fat people belongs to God. If you are a fat person in the house, come on, boy, shout hallelujah. Because I belong to God. Amen. You don't even know why you are here. Identity problem. Thank God when we, I think Dickie Navalabi, when he was talking about one of the letters in the excellence, he was talking about character. And he said, your attitude determines your altitude. Many Christians, their attitude is so bad. And but you don't see that our attitude is bad. We carry Bible to justify our bad attitude. Can I just tell you the truth? Bad attitude is like a flat tire of a car. Except you change it, you go nowhere. Some people, their mouth is a killer. They will see their helper that wants to help them. They will have abused their helper. Some, they will just run their tongue, you know, their mouth anyhow. They see their helper. And because they abuse everybody, even when they do business, they abuse their, their customers, their clients. And their clients will never come to them again. See, somebody who's supposed to help you. You're supposed to sell goods and you make money and you make profit. With your tongue, you send the person away. There are some, their character, they will come to pastor all the time. Pastor, pray for me. I need husband. I need husband. Please just check their mouths. Even if the, the right man comes their way, they will have washed down that man. Amen. Very bad character. Attitude. Some said, I will, you want to sit down in your husband's house very well. Thank God that your husband is born again, talk, talking. Sorry, sir. The way to a man's heart, apart from prayer and all this love, is his mouth. You don't know how to cook. And you said the man will understand. Which understanding? <laughs> Hallelujah. We are talking about what? Character. Even when they are still single, they say, oh, I'm just reading, I'm studying. S studying and reading as a lady. You cannot learn how to cook. And when you get married to one tongue-speaking brother, you want to take him to KFC every time? Hallelujah. The man will just check your bone again if it is correct or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here we are talking about character and here there, we are talking about exploits. Amen. Exploits. The Bible says they that know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. I would just define that exploit as being diligent, sir. As a Christian, we need to be what? Diligent. In everything that we are doing, we need to be skillful. Amen. There is a place for us to be what? Skillful. If you check the book, I'm going to the L and being a learned, you know, you learn. Many of us don't want to learn anything from anybody. Amen. But there is a place to learn. There is a place to learn the word of God. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 will not make any sense. If you have not searched the scripture and find some truth and revelation in that scripture. Isaiah 50 verse 4 with what we make no sense. He said the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned. It is people who has learned. 
that is the, the same set of people who can speak he said he has given me the thought because they learned that i should know how to speak a word in season to every weary heart amen and he weakening he awakened me morning by morning amen so there is when you wake up morning by morning there must be a word of life that should come out of your mouth there must be what a place of learning leading starts with following if you are a bad follower you can't be a good leader if you what you are a bad follower you can't be a good leader it is only good followers that become good leaders the disciples have they have to follow jesus for three and a half years they were at the back of the stage before when jesus christ departed they came on stage hallelujah many of us don't want to learn anything i don't know how you want to succeed in business when you are not skillful in it you are doing a business you are not skillful even when they needed somebody in palace to play instruments and sing they search through the land of Israel, but they find a man who is very skillful sorry sir david is anointed but the man the man's hand is something else he's very skillful with his hand if you are a footballer you need to practice if not when you get to the football field instead of you kicking the ball the ball will be kicking you <laughs> amen you need to be what to be skillful if you have a ministry this is music department you need to what to be skillful there is a time for you to learn how do you learn you listen to other people that are singing and some because they have one voice you need to train your voice <laughs> you know i'm not a singer praise the lord you know i don't but i i make joyful noise unto the lord hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> eh? there must be a place for you to learn if you are doing a business you need to look at those people that have succeeded in that business and learn skills of that business if you see successful people in life you need to learn from the successful people many of them you don't see them becoming millionaire overnight thank god for that testimony that he shared with us the other time he said i was selling belts i was selling this i was you know with a small salary you are in the land of dubai even if you are you are employed there are some businesses you can do go beyond ordinary do business learn skills and do what do business if you cannot invest here invest in your country no matter how small you keep moving gain motion praise the lord so there is another place for you you know the boy with your skill is talking about a man who is diligent you will see so many youths they are wasting their lives they cannot think there are opportunities around them and they'll be crying oh god i need five naira i need ten naira i need 20 dirhams you give some people there are some people you will give them five thousand dirhams they will come back with that five thousand with another five thousand dirhams there are some people it is in the church that i see that they celebrate mediocrity you will give some brethren strong speaking brethren five thousand dirhams they cannot multiply five thousand dirhams ask them what 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 happened to five thousand dirham after two months it has gone down the drain and they come back and say the church is not good but this is a man who has not learned anything on his skills he has never taken time to learn it is about giving 
and not you give him back give me i want to receive i want to receive i want to receive all the time you are receiving sorry sir you are potential energy just receiving you need to move and become kinetic energy you move and do something yeah many many are just potential energy i did electric and when i graduated i worked in oil services for one year after that i came back to i went i went back to lagos and i was not employed i went into the field and they said that there is one electrical work that we need to do i said i can collect electrical contract i was busy breaking walls and putting pipes there you will see some graduates today you'll find them they said can you break concrete he said no i am a graduate i cannot break concrete sorry sir you don't learn any skills by the time I got back into the office when I was, when, when, the last place that I worked before I came back to Dubai, when you talk about the practical, nobody, I, I interviewed the supervisors and electrician. I will tell you how they wire. I will know what said, know something about everything and everything about something. It means that you must have knowledge about everything and, some, and everything about something that is in your field, you must be an authority. If you have gone to school, you study electrical. When you see wire, there are so many engineers. When they see wire and they see cable, they cannot distinguish between 1.1 1 1, uh, 1 mm and 1.5 mm or 2.5 mm or 4 mm or 6 mm. Nor do you begin to talk about any other thing. That is you knowledge. You they, they just hit it somewhere. As I said, no, I just study electrical. I need to be in the office every time. Sorry, sir, there is where to get money. God, heaven will look at you. What do all these things that I blessed you with? What have you done with it? There is a place for you to acquire skills. And they don't come and meet you in your room. And some of them, you don't learn, in, you don't learn them at the four wall of university. You will find them on the field. People that are lower than you go down, stoop so low and learn many of us we don't learn anything and then we are the, the next step there because of time i'll talk about leaders you must be a leader that leads with love not this kind of military leading jesus christ said in matthew chapter 5 verse 13 he said ye are the sort of the arts we are talking about influence here you must be somebody who influences others to do something positively not inflexing people negatively we are in the church this is what you find you just find people just inflexing others negatively to just begin to do something negative and the e there which i want to which i've been talking about is entrepreneur Heaven wants you to, if you need to excel, you must be an entrepreneur. Heaven will ask you what he has deposited inside of you. What have you done with it? Matthew chapter 25, verse 15. He gave some people, he gave one person five. He gave another one two. He gave, one some, he gave somebody one. What did you do with that one? When he came back and he was asking the man, what have you done with what I gave to you? That means God is, is, God is what? God, he cannot use this word. God is a businessman. He has invested in you. He needs something back from you. What do you give back to him? You think God is just a father Christmas? <laughs> because he needed many sons. Because our God needs many sons. He gave his only begotten son. He sold Jesus Christ as a capital seed so that he can have many adapted sons. When Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, he shed his blood, then we can we, we can what? We can be redeemed. Many of us don't want to give anything and yet we want something from God. God will tell you, sorry, I am an entrepreneur when it comes to kingdom business. You need to give something. You come to a house, you don't have anything to give. You remove your shoe and put it inside the offering basket. You don't have anything. Remove your wristwatch and give it. There are 
are so many. You see, today they talk about some people who are higher flyer. Sorry, sir. They are entrepreneurs in the kingdom. They know how the thing operates. You, it is now in the kingdom that you push people. Come and pay your tithe. Come and pay your offering. You need to give something unto the Lord. The Lord has given it unto you. Sorry, the Lord that you are giving it unto. It's just an honor. He owns everything. You don't operate kingdom principle. Don't ask question. How is the money going? How is uh, one pastor is flying there? One is flying jet. Do you know those, some of them that are flying jets today? If they tell you the sacrifice they have made, the, the kingdom, what they have sown into the kingdom, you will marvel. Some of you cannot do it. I remember as if Bishop Oyedepo said in his early days, he was in the church, and they said, come and give offering. He danced and danced and danced, and he has nothing in his pocket. He removed his, 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 shoe, or his shoe and put it in an offering basket. Today you said he's riding jets. How did you sacrifice? What do you put? Even when with the blessings that God, some of you look, with the blessings that God has blessed you with, what do you give back to God? Is it time to begin to do economics with God? It is now these days I hear tight. Tight is 10%. Do you need any mathematician to tell you that 10% of 100 dirhams is 10 dirhams? The pastor, uh, when I remove my transport, I pay this one, I pay my house rent, uh, what is my tithe? <laughs> Sorry sir, in the kingdom, if you need to be an entrepreneur, you need to obey 100%. It is about obedience to the word. And you must be an entrepreneur, give and it shall be given unto you. And it comes in form of blessing in different forms. That heaven will give you what is obtainable in heaven. Heaven does not waste resources. If you don't use it well, the heaven takes it away from you. That one, that man, he said, if you have no, you should have given this thing that I gave to you to the bank, and I will come back and get interest. That is why Jesus Christ said, the children of this world are wiser in their generation. Some of them don't go to church, but they give alms. The Ethiopia Enoch that Philip joined and God needs him to be saved. The man does not know anything about kingdom, but he is a very kind-hearted man. He gives arms to people. In the church, we find people who are, who are misers. They will never, they, in fact, he, he asks them, he says, no, he is coming for my one dirham or ten dirhams that he wants to give. You don't operate kingdom principle. You give and it shall be given unto you. The way God blesses you, you will not understand. And you can't think it. Many people, they give arms to people or they give money to people. And maybe the devil wants to attack their home and the Lord preserve their lives or it save their children. That's a blessing, sir. But maybe you are expecting he gives me one dirham, I must get one dirham back. Time will fail, maybe I will want to talk more about this entrepreneurship. The Lord God does not waste resources. Even David himself, in Psalm 139 verse, what, in verse 14, he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I think when he goes to verse 15, he said, I begin to think about the substance that God has made me up with. You know, he look at what make up his life. He thank God. You need to take stock that God is a business, God a what is an entrepreneur. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to give your life to him for you to be able to enter heaven. It's a condition. You need to do what? Give your life to Christ for you to enter heaven. Praise the Lord. The end there is no limit. There are so many of us we are limited in our thinking. He said what? No limit. If you put a limit to what you can do, to what you can do, you have put a limit to what you can become. Many of us will put a limit upon ourselves, and God has not placed it there, but we just put a limit. I can't do this kind of business and exam. Be without starting the business at all. There is a limit and there is a barrier. Ah, I, I am this. I, I don't think I have this kind of ability. I don't have that muscle. Sorry, sir. You have put a limit on what you can do. 
So there is a limit on what you can become. Many of us, the end day, you don't know the next chapter of your life. And you don't know the next level that you are moving to. You need to picture yourself in the word of God. What is the next chapter? And what is going to happen at the next level? These are men of excellence. Different spirit, different. Even if there are so many youths in this country and they, they don't make it, what is your confession? Maybe I should go to the next scene. What is your confession? When people are putting limits upon themselves, but your own confession, what is your own confession? What do you confess? What do you profess to be? The Bible says when men are saying there is a casting down, you say there is a lifting. And what is your confession about this? And about the situation that you find yourself? And the last one is expression. Maybe I should use the word economic shift. God, Jesus Christ wants economic shift. From who? From you. Jesus Christ was taken to the high mountain by the devil and he showed him the economy of the world and the system. Everything that is going on. He said, just bow down and worship me because all these things have been given unto me. Who gave it to him? Adam and you and I who gave it to the devil. He said, bow down and just worship me and take this. But Jesus Christ did not tell the disciple when he was the, when he was ascending. He told them. He said, "Go into the world." <laughs> there is a difference between the world and the earth. He's talking about he's talking about system. When the Bible says, "Go into the world," he's talking about system. And the system of this world is not designed so that money will come to you. The system of this world is designed to take money from you. And that is why Jesus Christ said, go into that system and do what? And preach the gospel. We have so many systems in the world. Maybe I should just name some of them. Then we go into expression and we begin to worship God this morning. Amen. There is a way that you express yourself before God. Because God has a lot of things into your life you need to express gratitude back to him by doing what worshiping him Jesus Christ saved a woman from her sin and the sin was so much and that is the woman with alabaster bones and how did she express a gratitude a woman or a man of excellence must be a woman that expresses the love of Christ back to him. You know, everywhere that you find, you find the love of God around that person. And he expresses, I say, God, you are very good, you are great. And he expresses that. Many of us think it's God's duty to preserve your life. It's God's duty. It's just your duty you pray. So, you need to express in the case of that woman, she expressed her gratitude to God by pouring the most expensive oil on the Lord Jesus. Sir, so a lot of people were sitting with Jesus, even the women and people that have money, that are wealthy. But none of them poured an expensive oil on Jesus in worship. But Jesus Christ says something in that scripture. He said, anywhere this gospel is preached, this woman should be mentioned. What is he saying there? This woman that worship me, in everywhere you preach this gospel, worship must be there. Amen. That is, everywhere this gospel is preached, there is an example here for you to follow. That you need to be a worshiper. Pour those expensive things of yours and express gratitude unto God. 
How many of you are ready to do that? For he has saved you. And you want to say, thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done for me. For everything, for saving me out of my sin. I give it back unto you. Jesus Christ told the woman at the well, he said, a time is coming. And now is that those people that will worship God, we worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to stop here so that we can just go ahead with a thanksgiving. How many people are ready to express their gratitude unto God? Just rise up on your feet and say, God, I thank you. I am here today. I want you to think deeply.
I want all eyes closed. Just reduce the instruments. I want all eyes closed. This morning you have heard the word of God. I don't know how you have wasted heaven's resources that has been deposited in your life. You have wasted them and you know there is no way you can excel in the kingdom. When you keep wasting heaven's resources, if you want to turn back to God this morning, can I just see your hand on your chest? You have wasted heaven's resources. God bless you. For those people putting hand on their chest, you have wasted heaven's resources. You know, from everything that we have said this morning, you have wasted heaven's resources. I want your hand upon your chest. You know quite all right. You have wasted heaven's resources. And you keep wasting them. Sorry sir, there is no way you are going to excel. Without first reconciling with God. That has given you those things. Can you just take heaven and tell God I am sorry. For wasting all these resources that you have blessed me with. You know the Lord Jesus Christ before. You backslided. You are just wasting heaven's resources. Can you just lay your hand upon your chest? And you don't even know him at all. Lay your hand upon your chest. God bless those people that are doing that. I'm going to pray with you. Amen. I'm just going to pray with you. Then we're going to Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. For those of you that are just putting your hand upon your chest, only you. If the usher give you a card, just fill it and give it back to the ushers. And it's only those people that I want them to say amen. Because those are the people that are very sincere. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, your children that acknowledge the fact that they have wasted heaven's resources, that you invested in them. Lord, I join them and say we are sorry, sir. Lord, please be merciful in the name of Jesus. Lord, as they come back home, Lord, please accept them in the name of Jesus. And as they confess their sin, they confess their error, their mistakes, oh Lord, I pray, please forgive them. Lord, be merciful in the name of Jesus. Please write their name in the book of life. As they turn back unto you, oh Lord, I pray, don't cast them away. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Still all eyes closed. If you have received a card, just fill those cards and return it back to the ushers before you leave. God bless you. Let us pray. Righteous Father, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. Lord, I pray. Cause your word to prosper in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. We will not waste all the resources that you have invested in us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into the thanksgiving, Lord, give us a garment of praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let me tell your neighbor, I want to praise God. Is it? Come on, let me tell your neighbor, I want to praise God. I'm still going to pray the final prayer, but I'm going to show you something in the Bible. That when you praise God, it's going to lengthen your days. And that is the word for today. That when you praise God, God will do what? He will lengthen your days. It's scripture. I'm not talking outside the scripture. 
Amen. Amen. So, if God has done something special in your life, this is your month of birth, your wedding anniversary, and you want the first set of people to come and first give the Lord praise as we get the children and the teenagers ready. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. children thank you for some of them that are saying thank you for adding another year to my year thank you for the wedding anniversary lord i pray for the wedding anniversary sweet one will not cease in their union in the name of jesus it shall be well with them all the days of their lives thank you father blessed be your holy name in jesus name we pray so quickly, can we take the children and the teenagers? Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. You are the reason for the season. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Thank you so much, Lord Hey, hey, 
guys, let us pray. Lord, we give you praise. The children are saying thank you for your faithfulness in their lives. We are saying thank you for your mercy and your love that has kept us. Lord, we say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Our God and our Father will pray. Children, that your destiny is secured in Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It shall be well with each and every one of you. In the name of Jesus. You will not be at the mercy of your siblings. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be at the mercy of your mates. In the name of Jesus. You will all stand tall. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord we pray that creative ability. Shall be released into the lives of these children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy we pray that you will put a rod in the hands of these children. Like you put in the hands of Moses. Lord you will put a sling and a stone in the hands of these children. Like you put in the hand of David. That they will be able to fight their Goliath. In the mighty name of Jesus. Children you will be righteous. You will love God. You will serve God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our God and our Father will use these children as a point of contact. To every mother's in waiting. In the midst of us this morning. Lord we pray that the wind of resurrection blow over your wombs. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From the depth of our heart this morning. Daddy we pray for every mother's in waiting. Every strong man standing at the door of your womb this morning. The fire of the Holy Ghost consume them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your body will hear the word of the almighty God. This year will not pass you by. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for all the teachers. Daddy, please in your mercy. Renew the anointing daily. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wisdom from on high. Divine wisdom that surpasses every human understanding. Lord, please give unto them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Quickly, can we have the teenagers? Quickly, quickly. I be you no no say you
de Deus, shout aleluia. Eu não shout, shout aleluia. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your children. King of glory, as they have come to celebrate today. Lord God Almighty, they will be a true representation of believers. They will be a true representation of the child of God. Father, their deeds will win souls. Their speech will win souls. Father, even their dancing will win souls. Lord God Almighty, I'm asking and I'm praying that they will walk in power. They will walk in miracles. They will be an everlasting representation of your goodness. Lord God Almighty, these ones have remembered you in the day of their youth, even before evil comes. Father, evil will be far away from them. Nothing negative will befall these ones. Father, in their days, they will be stars. King of glory, everything they lay their hands on, education, even at play, they will be excellent. Father, in their class, their classmates will turn to them for solution. Even in their house, people will look up to them for direction. Lord, Lord Almighty, I'm asking and I'm praying, in this season of teenagehood, Daddy, they will not be misled. They will not be devoured. They will not be defiled. Lord God Almighty, I'm praying that there will be no peer pressure in their sleeping. Father, we are in the season of Valentine. King of glory, these ones will not miss their mark in this season. Lord God Almighty, as they will go about with their celebration, Father, together in agreement today, Father, we resist any form of the devil in their life. King of glory, they will excel. They will be wonderful. They will be excellent. Father, their parents, Lord, I'm asking and I'm praying, the resources, the understanding and everything they need to look after this one. King of glory, you will provide. Amen. Their teachers will know the right words to speak. Amen. And as they speak the words, Father, they will find a heart of flesh even in these teenagers. Amen. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty and everlasting name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have come, we are going to go into two sections. We are going to file out and give our thanksgiving offering and go quickly back to our seat because of time. And immediately after that, we enter into a Jericho praise. Amen. Amen. You have just had a testimony this morning. Somebody needed a job and got a visa via Jericho praise. I don't do what God did not ask me to do. Somebody came into this church and brought a baby that she got when she danced a Jericho praise. And this morning specifically God is saying something. That as you finish the Thanksgiving, you want to praise, just be coming from straight from your seat. Even if it is five minutes, we are going to give God extraordinary dance, extraordinary worship. Even if it is five minutes, I want you to just be here. I am not joking this time around. Amen. So quickly, let's give our thanksgiving offering, then we go back, then we come back for Jericho praise. God bless you.
pool of Bethsaida, a pool of mercy. You need your mercy, you need your miracle. Jump to the pool of mercy as we praise God. God bless you. Joy in the place. Joy in the place in my heart.
your day of sorrow has come to an end. If you have been weeping before, today marks the end of your weeping. Every area of your life that you have been disappointed, you are reappointed. The Bible says in Psalm 67, it said, let the people praise thee, let the people praise thee, then the earth shall yield this increase. Because you have praised God this hour, the Lord will cause the land of Dubai to yield this increase unto you. In the name of Jesus. Many people had a testimony on this mount. Fear worship God. Your own will not be exceptional. I prophesy over your life that your weeping has come to an end today. In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord is that there's going to be mercy this morning. 
may you find the mercy of God in the name of Jesus. David says, Lord, granted me, God, grant me any mercy in life. When the early mercy of God locates a man early in life, what his mates are doing, it will do at that time. If you have if you have missed it, according to your age or what your mates have done, you have missed it. I speak over your life at this time that the mercy of God finds you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. If your mates are married and you are yet to marry, I speak over your life today. The mercy of God finds you today in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be merciful unto you in the name of Jesus. As many that are still struggling, you are struggling and your mates are making it. Oh Lord, I pray for such person. May you find the mercy of God today. Many virgins were parade before the king. But when they start, when it was a turn, many people have taken turn. I don't know how many places that you have gone to or you have been to and you have taken turn. But in the case of Esther, it was not just a turn, but it is a time. I prophesy, as you come into this place today, wherever that you have been, that you have taken turn, when next you go there, it shall be your time. When the Lord change a man time and season, it will be like a dream. The Lord change your time and season for better. In the name of Jesus. Where you have been struggling, that struggle is terminated today. In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord says, when you praise God, the Lord will be merciful and he will prolong your days. Because you have praised God today, the Lord will be merciful unto you. And the Lord will prolong your days. In the name of Jesus. He will not just prolong your days, he shall prolong your days in blessing. In the name of Jesus, as many that are pregnant, you will not go into the labor room, but you shall go into a delivery room. You will deliver like the Hebrew women. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life. As many that are pregnant, you will deliver children like Samuel. You are just asking for a child. Anna went to Shiloh and she was looking for a child. But the Lord gave her a prophet unto a nation. More than what you ask, the Lord will give unto you today. In the name of Jesus. As many that are like Anna in this place this morning. And say, when will my own child come? You are just asking for a child. But the Lord will give you a child from the throne of grace. That will be sent unto a nation. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Is your day of divine visitation. As you go to bed tonight, the Lord will divinely visit you. In the name of Jesus. As many that want to change their job and say, God, I don't just like this work. Oh Lord, I pray the heaven reposition you and position you for a better job. In the name of Jesus. Ha. In the time of famine. The Bible said you shall laugh. When there was a global famine, that was the time that God announces Joseph. In this time of global recess, the Lord God Almighty we announce you to your world. In the name of Jesus. Your life will not be recessed. You will not go down in life. As many that want you to go down will go down for you. When men are saying there is a casting down, it is your turn to say there is a lifting. You will be divinely lifted. You will be miraculously promoted. In the midst of famine, 
in the midst of no work, the Lord God Almighty will begin to bless you with jobs. In the name of Jesus. May we not ask you, where is your God? With everything that you have done for God, with all your contribution to God's work, ah, may we not ask you, where is your God? When God performs a miracle in your life, they will tell you and they will call you and say, take me to your God. This shall be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Uh, as many that knelt down with their problem, as you rise, your problem will not rise with you. As you rise, all the challenges in your life will not rise with you. You have come to Mount Zion. Ah, you have come to your month of deliverance. From every attack of the enemy, from every bondage of the enemy, the Lord set you free in the name of Jesus. If any man have cursed you, like Jacob caused his son Reuben, I reverse that curse this morning. As many that says, the way you go to Dubai, that's the same way you are going to return. Ah, Lord, if it is activated in the air, Lord, I speak your word into the air. And I recalibrate the atmosphere. And I say unto the air, hear the word of the Lord. Concerning everyone that is kneeling down this place. Oh Lord, I pray. Every curse over their life is reversed. Lord, I have not chosen myself, but you have chosen me. Lord, I lay a demand on the anointing over my head. And I say, every chain that is holding down your people, in one way or the other, let them give way this morning. When you come back again, it shall be your time of testimony. I bless your hand with the blessings of the Lord. As from today, everything that you touch turns to God. Every business that you touch, you will prosper. The promotions that you are not even qualified for, the favor of Almighty God delivers it unto you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray.